All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, this is going to be our August 2023 re uh, release recap. And um, my name is Amanda. I'm going to talk about the USAS information first, and then we'll go over the USPS updates and the inventory as well. Um, I don't have too much for you on USAS, so we're going to go real quick through this part. But um, we did have two USAS releases, and um, we had 8.7 or yeah, 8.79 and 8.80. So um, these came out throughout the month. And really the reason that I don't really have screenshots and stuff for you is it's not necessarily stuff that you're going to be seeing in the software. We have some things going on in the background. Um, the first couple things that I have on here is uh, bug fixes. So uh, the soap bridge was updated to prevent creating user accounts as a side effect of posting transactions. This was a very specific situation. So we had it reported there was like a certain situation where a specific type of transaction had um, created a user account. Obviously, we do not want that to happen. So the team went in and reviewed um, the SOAP bridge and just made sure that nothing like that can happen. So that is locked down. Um, corrected the account change process to prevent the posting period rules from interfering with the account change process. So um, when the account change um, when the account change goes in and updates the account and updates all of the transactions related from the old account to the new account, it does do that for the current fiscal year. So, um, you know, once they're not in July, there is a part of that process where it needs to go look back at closed periods. And there was a rule that was basically um, about that had related to reopening closed periods. And so that was interfering and that was saying, hey, you can't run this account change because you have this rule. Well, um, if they're running an account change, you know, we wanted to review that so that, you know, you didn't have to go disable a rule every time just to run this process that they obviously wanted to run. So that was reviewed and corrected. Um, and then we have some improvements. So for improvements, uh, this one, the USPS integration was updated to include the value of the account code in the error message when the account is not found. It previously included this, it says UUID. And honestly, this visual part, this is on the USPS side. But what we did is we made some updates on the USAS side that could work with USPS so that it could pass over that account code. Um, the UUID, if you've ever seen those, it's like a big mixture of uh, letters and numbers, and it might not mean much to you. Um, there's a way to look those up, but that isn't the most uh, user-friendly thing to have in an error message because then you have to take some work to go figure out which account that represents. So uh, that's updated um, so that it would it's able to actually pull the account code that you know and recognize. <laughs> And then the last one that I have on here is um, we created the REST controller for organization. Now these, we were we had um, updates related to these on the USPS side previously, and they're getting started on USAS. So I expect to see more of these on here in the future. Um, they're for future use, so they're not gonna impact the application at this time. So this isn't something you're gonna see a change because of, it's something that the developers are working on in the background. Um, to get some updates in there. So yeah, so that's all I have for uh, USAS. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Okay. Alrighty, well, we will get switched over and uh, move to USPS then. Thank you, Amanda. All right, so I need you. To Let's see, get my screen shared here. Okay, I think that's it. There we go. Okay. We will get going on the payroll side of things. All right, can everybody see my screen okay? Okay, where are we at right here? Okay, um, these are for the August releases. And in August, we had three. Uh, we had one hotfix, which was on 
And then we had two just normal regular ones, and that was on 811 and 825. So we'll be going through those. So the first ones we'll be doing is just the bug fixes. Um, on the 6.97 release, we did some EMIS updates, um, removing some fields that were no longer going to be needed. Um, and actually, when we did that, then we had a lot of districts coming back saying they couldn't um, submit any um, staff data. They were having um, errors. And this was because of the coding that we removed on J and X of the funding source. So when we did that, that's what caused these errors. So they went and, and put those all back. Um, so that way they could um, correct those fields because we found out that those fiscal year 23 reporting should have never had those codes. So um, we had to revert that back. And so they could update those to the correct fields and remove them. So they were no longer using the JRX. And then um, once that was uh, fiscal year 23 is complete with submissions for that staff collection, then um, we can um, go ahead and re take those off so they'll no longer be available. Um, the next one was the payables de re detail report. Um, what was um, notice a district came in that had over a million um, on their payrolls detail reports every payroll. It was missing the last zero um, or the last um, digit. So we had to um, correct that on the payables detail report so it shows um, the whole full amount with the cents on the end. Uh, the new contract mid-year um, change. Um, we noticed uh, districts were stating that when they were running the mid-year contract changes for districts, and if an employee was completely paid out, if they did want the first pay of their contract was completely paid out of accrual with no contract days, it was creating two compensation journals on that new contract for that mid-year. So that was making the contract or the amount paid and the amount earns to double. So they had to fix that bug. So now when they do the mid-year contract change, only one compensation journal will be created with the correct amounts. Some districts might have seen this and some not. It just depends how their employees were being paid out of that first pay. And then they were doing a mid-year contract change right away. Um, in the employee onboarding for the workflows, there was a district that um, couldn't complete a couple employee, new employees that they had in her. And this was due to a actual user from the district was completely deleted out from the district. And what that did messed, and then that messed with the onboarding that she was working on at that time. So they had to go in and do a bug fix for that district itself so they could complete those workflows um, with another user in the district. Moving on to the improvements, um, we had one, um, we had a lot of districts are in coming through that were stating that um, reports were changing font sizes. And they, um, we were having a hard time figuring out what was going on. So what they did to figure out, to just improve it, um, they did the following reports. So that way now they should be showing correctly when districts view them. Um, now, again, these are the reports that they did so far. Now, if they have, you have other districts that come in and they say that, that another report is doing the same thing, please let us know, open a ticket and we'll send that on the developers and they can um, fix that report. <clears throat> but these are the ones that were having the major problems at that time. The next one, is the add full account um, code. Um, districts and ICs were noted, wanting um, when the employer distribution, if there was an account that was not good or wasn't active or, or it was inactive or wasn't on the USS side, it was coming back with an ID code like this one here at the end right here. And this was all that was given them. Um, so they had to go through steps, ITC did to find it. Um, and now we just added the code directly in that. So now when it does fail, they can find out what code it is, or excuse me, what um, account code it is, and, um, and do their fix from there. So they no longer have to do the steps to try to figure out what that account code is. So I think districts will like that. 
The next thing is the payables detail report. We had um, a lot of requests that they add the total gross to those um, payable reports along with the equitable gross. So that is now added on those reports. The next one is the leave activity report. We had a request from a district that um, they love the activity report. The only thing they would really would want is if they had a negative sign for usage because before it was showing all positive for usage and um, that was kind of confusing to districts. So now they we added the negative symbol here on any usage length and negative accumulations. So it should be easier to read. The next one was the employee mass loader. Um, they were noticing when they were doing the employee um, loading in using the mass loader, they were finding that any employees that had apostrophes in their names were causing issues. So that was fixed now. So they should not have any problems if they show an apostrophe in their name. That was stopping the mass load, I believe, and causing an error. The next one, um, we had a request for the W-2 overflow forms. Um, if an employee had multiple cities and they were printed on two forms, um, they didn't want the second form to have any data in the one through six fields in the seven through 12 D fields. They just wanted the second form just to show those um, locality wages and income tax to only be printed on that W-2. So that has been updated and that will be um, ready to go for the upcoming um, end of year. <clears throat> Um, the next one was the behind the scenes um, work that the developers did. And all this did was to, if districts had 50 plus pay groups on a payroll, um, they were just trying to improve how the software was querying those batch jobs um, and link them to payroll. So again, that was just a behind the scenes update. <clears throat> Another one was uh, done to the SOAP server position queries when it collects. Um, Districts were wanting for their third parties um, to be able to see which um, positions were archived so they could filter those out a lot easier. So again, that was done behind the scenes. The next one was a W-2 form and report. Um, we found that if an employee had a name um, suffix, they was not adding that um, to the two, uh, W-2 form itself and also on the report. So this was now added. So that will be corrected for the upcoming end of year when they run W-2s, if they have employees with that. <clears throat> the next one is um, we a district noticed that when they were looking at the employee race, um, it was not being consistent across the grids. So like employee, employee personnel and employee dashboard, they were showing kind of different. So now it matches. All three will match. When you go and look at those uh, that field, it will show the exactly the same way. And that was just an improvement that was done. Okay. On to the new features. Um, districts were asking if we could add a memo line to their checks and direct deposits. So that was been that has been added now. So now when they're processing, if they process checks um, during payroll or direct deposits printing, those will show. Or if they go to their um, processing payments um, in the check register, that will also be there that they can add, re-add it if they need to. The only thing is we don't have at this time is email direct deposit notices. So if they added a memo line, um, it's not going to show on in any email direct deposit notice at this time, but we do have a juror issue out there to add that. And also another thing, if you have default, if your districts have default custom direct deposit notices, you want to make sure you have, you add that um, special memo line to that um, default cus um, custom direct deposit notice. And we do have that out here in our documentation. I didn't have that up ready to go because I didn't think about it. Um, let's see. Um, what would that be if you need it? 
Mm, no, not in utilities. Let's go down here. Appendix in general. Useful procedures of it. Yep. Let's see. I do believe I thought I put it in here. I did not. Okay. I know I have it in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Memo. Adding a memo line to custom fields. So again, just remind if you have districts that want this, but they have, they're using default custom um, direct deposit notices. Um, they're going to have to make sure they add this line, this memo line in there. And, if, and again, you have to do it exactly um, follow these steps to, to get it um, added in. They can't just add it on the direct deposit notice and save. They have to make sure they do this merge field. So just a reminder with that. Okay. Uh, the next one is W2C records. You want to create a W2 correction for your employees. We have um, started working on this and we got a couple things already in there. We got the records and the report started so far. So that's coming along nicely. And let me go here. Of course, it logged me out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so where you're going to find this is under reports. And down here under W-2 corrections, and then you have your W-2C records and W-2C reports. So the first one, W-2C records, um, here's where you actually will create the W-2C. So what you can do is create it. You pick the employee that you need to correct the year that you need the correction for and create the correction record. <clears throat> so this is now what you'll see. So you see this will um, automatically um, input there the year, the employee uh, number and the name. And then from here, whatever needs to be corrected, you can uh, go ahead and enter that in. So you enter in what if it was you already had original wages, but those were incorrect. So you put what the original was and what the corrected amount is. So every field has a corrected field added now. Um, if they completely forgot to add something, um, they can go ahead and just add that in. Um, like box 14, um, if they don't have they never had original code, they can just enter their what the corrected code like vehicle lease and $500 was supposed to be there. So all they do is just add a record on each if they have to fix box 12, 14, other state corrections or local corrections. Okay. So I think that's gonna be pretty handy. I do have one here that I already did. And as you can see, I did uh, like the box 14 and I just added what um, I forgot to enter in on this employee's W-2 at the time um, when we ran them. Okay. And then the next thing, so if you have multiples or you want to keep records um, for their files or something, you can do a W-2C report and you can run it. Um, just for maybe one employee that's in that grid that we just were in, or if you want to show everybody, you can do that. So you can start, if you have 50 employees that you had to do corrections on, you can start an employee on each new page and you can keep that for their files. Um, and again, you want to make sure you select your correct year. And then if you're going to just do individual, if not, leave it blank to select all. So I'll go ahead and select that. And here's your report. So it just shows um, what was corrected. And you can see here that my vehicle lease that I added. So again, they can um, just um, print that out and they can do a double check to make sure that is correct. Okay. Um, the next thing I just kind of wanted to show is that they're still is still um in a working work in process, and I do have the Jira issue is, issue out here. Um, this shows everything that they're working on at the moment or what was already worked on, 
And um, so they're working on um, to submit that um, W2C to SSA. They're working on that as um, we'll be working on that, but these should be um, done before the year end. Um, the only thing that they are not going to do at this time is the W-2-3 uh, correction. So um, the districts will still have to do that manually and um, and send that in. As of right now, we do have feedback issues on that to add those. Um, but so um, the only thing we have at the moment will be to submit the W-2-C and not the W-2-C-3, um, right? Yeah. So W3C, excuse me. Um, so just a reminder on that, that they still have to do that themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, and then they just had a patch um, for district um, for uh, employee distribution submission that they had to fix. So that was just for um, one district. Okay. Um, is there any questions on any of uh, the releases that we had for August? All right. Um, I will send this over to Michelle, I believe. Um, thank you and have a good weekend. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Hope everyone in, has some great plans for the long extended weekend. Um, what I'm going to do is just touch upon the, um, I'm going to move my chat over here in case we have some questions. Um, I want to touch upon the inventory that took place here in August. We had uh, one release and one hot fix. And so um, we did, did take care of a couple of bug fixes. Um, the schedule of changed and fixed assets, uh, the detail report um, was incorrect in regards to the transfer amounts. Um, they were including the transfer amounts on the beginning balance, on the detail. The summary report was fine. It was just the detail that was including it in the beginning balance amount, which it should be including it in the transfer column. Um, so we fixed that. So now the summary and the detail report balance each other. Um, so the, those beginning balances do not include the transfers that took place in the year. Uh, the next one, the location worksheet, we were doing some corrections on sorting, but uh, we have received reports uh, since then that there's still some sorting uh, issues on that location worksheet. Um, so we have created a new issue. The developers just created it this morning, um, and it's your issue 5, INV 512. And we're going to look into this further um, to, you know, take a, another look at the sorting on the location worksheet and get that resolved on this new issue. Um, so, um, so if, you know, you do see some issues with the sorting, know that, you know, with the location worksheet, know that we're working on that. And we're going to get those corrected. The schedule of changed and fixed assets and the schedule of change and depreciation reports were corrected to remove payment types. Payment types are not to be included on those gap reports. Um, so we, um, I think, you know, that was something that um, was reported a little while ago. So we did get that corrected now that those payment type of acquisitions um, should not be included on the gap reports. And also we corrected a bug um, and that was on the hot fix on 140.1. Um, that impacted districts that migrated prior to the 115 release. Um, what was happening, I think I have a screenshot, it says here it's causing the fiscal year page to display a null pointer exception instead of the proper view. So when trying to navigate to the fiscal year page, it wasn't, uh, it I think there was like problems with maybe like a report bundle being generated. And it was because, and I think I've got that listed here. So here's what you're seeing is that this year is missing. Um, and so that was causing some issues. So we have fixed that. 
Um, but I know there was a workaround that you could have gone in, edited that, added the year. Um, and then like, if it was an issue with the report bundle for that year, it would have generated okay. Um, but yeah, that's been taken care of on this last hot fix so that um, that information is populated. So um, that has been resolved. Um, we have had a couple improvements too. Um, one of uh, the biggest thing that we wanted to get done around the time that districts are closing inventory is an issue with um, the, the fiscal year displaying on the audit report. So if I go back to that document here, I have an example of what's going on here. Um, so before, when a year was um, like modified or open and closed, um, it wasn't indicating what the year was. Um, so all you saw in the audits reports were a bunch of um, just open and closing, but it never showed the year that was being open and closed. So you never knew which one they they uh, you know were opening and closing or making current. Um, so we've updated the audits report to indicate that. So um, just to kind of review what you're seeing here, um, like adding a fiscal year, obviously it's going to show the fiscal year here, 2024. And obviously it's going to show that because you're adding a new year, it went from null, empty, to 2024. Um, here's an example of, I think this was more of the issue, was um, modifying. Um, so here um, they modified the year. So here it's where it's finally showing that year. And it's showing that it was opened, um, that it, I'm sorry, that it was closed. It went from open, which is true, to now closed. So it's telling me 2023 uh, was closed. And here's another example of they um, made 2024 current. So it went from false to true. So which year? 2024. So, um, so a really good improvement on that. Um, and especially around uh, fiscal year and time when they're opening, closing um, years and stuff, it's just nice to see that a little more sp uh, spelled out here on the audits report. And um, the last thing that um, they put in here as well, and I know they try to, to get that on, you know, during fiscal year end as well, just in case um, auditors have uh, wanting to run the book value for just disposed of items. So if I go into my instance here um, and go to uh, the book value report, oh, which I already have up, you'll see that they've added these disposition start and stop dates. So they can run a report just of disposed of assets. So that's something that um, has been requested for a little while. So we um, improve the book value report to include um, this capability, this filter. And I believe um, that's all we had in regards to um, the inventory updates. Uh, in the last month. Um, just one other thing I wanted to touch upon, I'm going to go to our training page is, you know, um, oh, it's just coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're very excited. Um, State Software is going to have uh, three sessions there. And we are also going to be doing a session just for you guys um, at the end of the day on Thursday. Um, and we're not going to talk about the actual software per se, we're gonna talk about everything but the software, um, you know, talk about trainings and talk about just, you know, questions that you guys have. Um, so a lot of just um, stuff that, you know, we just wanted to, you know, connect with you guys and just get together and, and just talk about, you know, stuff like that, trainings, um, information that you guys would like to see, you know, maybe feedback from your districts, like in regards to maybe newsletter topics, um, talk about um, JIRA and the ticketing systems, um, just stuff like that, and just kind of communicate uh, just some things that might help you guys with the support resources that we have out there. So um, that will be at the end of the day, Thursday, after all of the sessions are done. Um, it'll be uh, fiscal sessions are going to be held in our Gemini room, same place they were last year. Um, and so we'll all meet in there after the day and just talk about some stuff. So um, that will be um, coming up soon in a, another couple of weeks. 
Um, after that, um, the last session that we're going to be covering in um, September is inventory. We're going to go through the systems menu and talk like the import options in there, whether you're doing an import using the import option or whether you're going and doing the migration import option. So we're just going to clarify some stuff in there and just go over that uh, with you on uh, that day. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out before we wrap things up here is um, we are canceling a session. We had a Fridays with Bissell scheduled for October 13th for a system uh, recap session. Um, we have a meeting. Um, the Management Council has an all-team meeting that day, um, I believe down in Dayton. So we will not be here that day. Um, so that's why we had to cancel this session. And I know that back in March, when we had the OACN United Conference, we pretty much touched upon Mark and Jody and Matt went through the system recap information um, during that conference. So um, we feel like this kind of would have been a repeat. I think we scheduled this before we knew what the OACN conference sessions were. And so we felt like um, this was kind of a, a perfect timing thing and uh, just to cancel this since it was covered at the OECN United Conference and since we won't be in the office that day. Um, so um, so I just wanted to point that out in case you guys, you know, did um, register for this one already that it is going to be canceled. Um, and I think that's all I had to share. If you guys don't have any questions, I hope you guys all have a wonderful holiday weekend and uh, we'll see you guys at OETSA. Thanks.